Hey, David Johnson. Oh, a little bit early for Christmas. I, it's almost Christmas. It's so almost Christmas. What's going to happen before Christmas? Webinar is going to happen before Christmas, and we're going to be looking at India. Got to love India. Got to right? love India. Got to love India for Thailand as well. Big market, right? Criti critical market, and it's and it's coming here. We're going to hear from Pinky Aurora, who's from the Tr uh, Tourism Authority of Thailand. Paul Wu from Go First, rebranding Go First. That's very exciting. Stanley Rosario, who is from the uh, um, the Thai Indian Tourism Club. Ravi Chandran, he's the CEO of Laguna Phuket. Hessian Pires, Hessian is the corporate chef at Laguna Phuket. Sally Mangharan, who is the MD Mantra Events. Rajit Wishwatanatan, and he is from um, the Hyatt Regency Phuket Resort. And Niti Sachdeva, who's from TSEB. We're really excited for everyone to join us. David, today. you're out of breath you. almost. God. Pretty much. Right. It's a long list. We've got a lot to get through. Well, let's today. get on with it, David. Should we get going? Welcome to the webinar. Welcome to the webinar. Right, let's go. I had to start at the top, and this is Pinky Aurora, who is a marketing and PR representative from the Tourism Authority of Thailand and India. Good afternoon, Pinky. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So we're, we've, we've got lots on to talk about. I've got a lot of questions. But what are the strategies currently in place to bring the Indian market back to Thailand? You know, what are those key things that you want to talk about today? So, um, you see, we've been doing several activities to keep Thailand as a top of the mind destination. So what we're doing is we are engaging with consumers online, offline. You see, it's very important to stay connected with consumers as well as the travel trade. So whenever we, the situation allows us, we do physical meetings, you know, network, networking presentations, meetings, roadshows with travel trade, Thai food, cooking classes. Then we do this golf tournament. So we've been doing a lot of uh, activities to keep it going. And when the situation is not too good, then we do webinars. So it, if I'm a hotel in Thailand, I want to start promoting to the Indian market, looking forward to 2022. What are the best ways I can work with TAT or, 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 or your activities there? So um, there are several things that we keep doing. And in fact, uh, you know, your, the hotels can join us uh, to do these activities. Like, you know, for example, we're going to do some fam trips. Hotels can support us. We can do inspections. We can do, you know, just help us with all these activities that we do. In fact, we are also, not just these activities, we are also doing, uh, you know, you're emphasizing on the fact that Thailand is a very safe place to travel to. So we keep promoting the hotels and we keep talking about that all hotels, attractions, restaurants are all, uh, you know, following the protocols and uh, they are all SHA certified. So these are the things that we've been doing. Then we also... Uh, communicating to the to the Indians that uh, you know Thai, uh, India is a uh, India is a very important market for Thailand and they're very welcomed in Thailand. Right. When we look so at we the, keep, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So we keep updating them on you know the latest situation, the procedure, you know how to get visa and how to get these. Uh, you know, earlier it was COE, now it's the Thailand pass. We keep telling them, we keep educating them how to go about it. So what are your targets? Looking at 2022 in terms of arrivals, you know, into Thailand for the Indian market, have you set targets already? Uh, not really. With the current situation and no regular flights, it's hard to set a target. But we've, we've been talking to these, uh, to the agents and, uh, you know, encouraging them to do these charters. In fact, make my trip it's an online company. They are doing some charters to Phuket in the month of December and January. So hopefully we should get around 2,000 packs to Phuket in the month of December and January. Then we also have these, uh, we have a charter for uh, going for a wedding to Phuket uh, also in December. So, um, you know, so like that, there are these few charters that are going in all. So we, we are supporting them with all these. Or Aside from, we can. yeah, we've seen the go first flights coming into Phuket, but what other destinations do you think are going to be evolving early in 2022 from India as well? You know, where we're going to see airlift going in? Yeah, it's going to be mostly from metro cities like Delhi, Mumbai, Calcutta, Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad. And, uh, you know, since we have, we, we'd probably have direct flights from here. Other than that, even the tier two cities, like, for example, Chandigarh in Punjab, Lucknow, 
Kanpur in UP, Raipur near Calcutta, in the West there's Pune, Ahmedabad, Kochi in from the South. So all these cities are also very potential. What do you think needs to be done more to attract Indian visitors to Thailand? We've seen the Maldives, we've seen Dubai certainly attracting Indian travelers and getting good room rates as well. What can, what can Thailand do better to attract Indian visitors? So basically our aim is to facilitate the travelers by making things easier for them. We're getting a lot of feedback from them. For example, PCR test is expensive and there should be visa on arrival. So, so we, what we do is we, that we coordinate with our head office and wherever head office can help and, uh, you know, um, sort of talk to the authorities and all, and they get things done. Like, for example, visa on arrival, you know, is now allowed for the Indians. And PCR tests, I think the Thai government is trying to reduce the rates and all that. So these are the demands that uh, currently, you know, I, uh, most people in India are, are concerned about. And of course, about, uh, you know, about, uh, uh, so we also, we also projecting Thailand as a safe country. This is what is needed. And for hoteliers and attractions and all, I think it's very important for them to have a regular update. I mean, to be in touch with these, uh, to, with the travel agents, because Indians, you know, it's very important to be in touch with them. So send them regular uh, updates about the hotel, about attractions, then of course, offer incentives and give them special rates, promotions, but just be in touch with them. That's very important. Okay. And also um, hiring some Indian people in your in the hotels and all that also helps quite a bit. Then we okay. also, you know, whenever the situation allows, I think for road shows and all, uh, hotels and all should consider joining these exib trade exhibitions, road shows, and all that. So we think next year the road shows are going to be kicking back in. We'll be less doing less less webinars. Thank God for that. But certainly in terms of road shows, we're going to see more marketing activities on the ground in India for Thailand next year, correct? That's right. In fact, uh, we're planning to participate in Sate. So Sate is a very popular um, uh, travel exhibition that happens annually. And uh, in the month of February, it's going to be a you know, physical exhibition. So I think we're planning, we most probably TAT will participate in that. And hopefully we have some hotels from Thailand joining us. Okay, great. Pinky Aurora, thank you for joining us this afternoon in the webinar. And we look forward to seeing more Indian travelers to Thailand. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right, now we have Paul Wu. Paul Wu is the regional head Southeast Asia of Go First India. Paul, welcome. Thank you, David. Thank you for having me on this webinar. Excellent. You're very welcome. Um, let's start with routes. Um, what is the um, uh, what is the uh, current, what are the current routes that are flying? Are they scheduled? Are they charter? You know, when can we move from charter to regular service? Just give us an update um, there, please, for Thailand. Well, David. Uh, firstly, for the benefit of all our listeners and viewers, uh, let me inform everyone that Go Air has now been rebranded to Go First. So we were formerly called Go Air. Now we are called and we've rebranded ourselves as Go First. And we are immensely proud to be the first Indian airline to resume direct flights into Phuket starting from 4th of December. So currently we are only operating charters and the reason being that uh, international schedule, international flights from India remain suspended until 31st of Jan 2022. And in the absence of an air bubble agreement between Thailand and India, we are unable to operate any other flights besides charters. That said, uh, David, we have 10 charters lined up, which started off from the 4th of December up to 10th of January 22. And that brings in an estimated 2,000 Indian visitors into Phuket. Amongst okay. these 10 charters is one of the most biggest production houses of Bollywood called Dharma Productions, which is flying in from Mumbai to Phuket on the 17th of December. This, I believe, will be a huge boost to the tourism industry of Phuket and Thailand, because once the movie releases, uh, Phuket will be shown as the venue of, of uh, the movie. And once uh, the international uh, flights resume from India, uh, David, the plan is to operate from all the metro cities, namely Bombay, Bangalore, Delhi, 
Calcutta and Chennai to Phuket and Bangkok. We nice. also have plans of reviving our discussions, which we were holding pre-COVID with a few, with a couple of Thailand-based airlines, in terms of having a partnership, leveraging our network for through check-in of passengers and baggage. So that we have a plans to revive going forward in the future. Excellent. So the destinations that you're looking at um, from um, from various locations in India are Bangkok and Phuket direct for those charter flights. Yes, absolutely right. Okay, that's fantastic. Are you looking at any other destinations in the future? Krabi, for example? Well, uh, our network planning team, uh, route evaluation, new routes evaluation and study is an ongoing exercise, David. Right. And uh, we are very keen and we are open to operate and fly into new routes into Thailand. Should there be a sustainable pattern of demand? Having said that, again, we are open to charters if there is any demand for uh, leisure destinations in Thailand, such as Wahin and Uttapau. So I am in talks and discussions with the Wahin Phoenix Group, uh, which is managing the Wahin uh, Airport, for possible charters uh, for golf golfers from India to Thailand. That's really exciting news. Thanks very much for that, Paul. Um, let me uh, let me ask you too about about the experience, the on-flight experience. Just talk us through it a little bit of, um, for Go First. So, well, uh, uh, David, for Go First, uh, the safety and uh, uh, a comfortable flight experience is on top priority and comes first at all times. So, having said that, uh, all safety protocols in terms of uh, sanitizing the aircraft cabin pre and post every flight arrival and departure is done. Uh, we use uh, the approved disinfectants to clean our aircraft cabin. Our aircraft is fitted with the high efficiency particulate air filters, which ensures 99.99% cleaning of the uh, air inside the aircraft. Our cabin crew is wearing the PPE kits and gloves uh, when they do the service. So in terms of the safety and flying experience, I believe and we are confident that we have the confidence of our passengers in terms of safety and comfort. And that itself is testimony to the, the uh, number of flights which have increased over a period of uh, the last six months in the domestic and now we are operating charters to uh, Thailand as well. Excellent. Paul Wu, um, Regional Head Southeast Asia of Go First. Thank you so much for being with us today and congratulations on your rebrand. Thank you, David. Thanks a lot. And we look forward to uh, resuming our scheduled international flights to Thailand and more destinations besides Phuket and uh, Bangkok. We're looking forward to it too. Paul Wu, thank you very much. Thank you, David. Hi, Stanley. Welcome to our webinar. Hi, thank you for welcoming me. Just briefly, uh, a quick introduction. So Stanley Rosario um, is the Director of Marketing and Communications for the Thai Indian Tourism Club, which is called TITC, and also heads up the business development for the Indian subcontinent market at Asian Trails. Welcome again, uh, Stanley, to, to the Indian market webinar today for Thailand. Thank you very much. So we've got a few questions lined up for you. What are the opportunities for Thailand currently in terms of the Indian outbound market? Uh, well, when you think of Thailand uh, opportunities, of course, it's a very big opportunity for us because, uh, uh, first of all, it's, um, there is a lesser flying time, if you're aware, because a city like Kolkata has a, only a two hours flying time from uh, uh, Kolkata to Bangkok. If you're looking at a longer destination like a Mumbai or a Delhi, it's like four and a half hours approximately flying time. So uh, when we talk about Thailand as a destination, of course, Indians have not traveled for the last two years, except maybe a Dubai or a Maldives. So when we think of uh, short haul destinations, which are uh, economically viable as well, Thailand is one of the destinations which comes to their mind instantly. And there is plenty of opportunity because when they come here, uh, the food options are plenty. They get quality Indian food options. Then uh, the cost of stay and traveling is quite economical. Uh, Destination-wise, you can uh, there are a lot of nice beaches here. Then you have very. Uh, I mean, if you want to go uh, to Chiang Mai, option they can get some very nice uh, hill station as well. 
So plenty of options here. I mean, it's a very, very scenic destination and very nice place to uh, which which comes to their mind instantly for Indians. Thank you. So do you see any uh, pent up demand at the moment? And uh, what, what do you think 2022 is going to be looking like uh, from a DMC point of view? Point of demand point of view, of course. I mean, uh, Indians have been desperately wanting to travel. Indians are very, very nice travelers, to be very frank. And every year, uh, if you look at the data and analysis, Indians are one of the uh, uh, people who actually travel quite a lot. Thailand, they have is one of their most preferred destination as well. They uh, till now, Indian government has only allowed them. Every if you talk about abroad destinations, they have only been allowed to travel to Dubai and Maldives. And uh, now, when they have heard the news that Thailand is opening up the borders and uh, the scheduled flights are going to start and all, there are plenty of inquiries and uh, daily uh, questions which have which keep coming from them. EAT has done a fabulous job of spreading the news around and uh, they and TSEB is also doing a very, very nice job there. And so the MICE destinations, if you say that the, the quality, the corporates and all, everybody is actually promoting Thailand again. And we see a very good uh, demand for it when the scheduled flights will start operating. Right. So with, with the current changes and post-COVID, do you see... Um, any new experiences that you know the market uh, Thailand could be offering to the Indian market? What, what's your take on that? Well, uh, to be very frank, there are uh, only two, three uh, concerns which we have presently. One uh, is uh, the RT-PCR test is presently a bit higher side, and if we uh, go for uh, coach. Uh, capacity and restaurant capacity because of social distancing, the prices might go up a little bit higher. Mm. But uh, if we brief them properly, I mean, through TAT, through TSEB and through this TITC club, which we have formed now, I mean, we are actually going to impart proper knowledge to them and brief them that uh, do not think about only cheap, maybe a little bit, pay a little bit higher, but come for quality destination, come for quality services. So right. this is how we plan to promote it. Okay, excellent. And just one last question as well. What do you do? You see a difference in dynamics when it comes to groups versus um, uh, FIT, which is the uh, you know independent travelers, and how are we adapting to that? If there are any uh, changes, I mean differences between the two groups. Not much of a changes, but to be very frank, like nowadays we have already uh, been imparting this because when we form this TITC. Uh, the main idea for us was to uh, impart proper knowledge to small DMCs. We are actually, we started off with 29 members, but the idea is to make it bigger and larger, where we include the hoteliers, where we include the suppliers as well. And uh, then we make this bigger and bigger, and we will provide quality information to all the people in India as well as in Thailand. So the dynamics, when we say dynamics, when uh, we talk about uh, the increase in cost a little bit, the social distancing part, the RT-PCR test and all, we are going to give them quality information. So when they contact us, they will exactly know what is uh, needed when they come to Thailand. I don't think it is going to be a much important uh, aspect because FITs or uh, groups, when they come, if the information is given to them in advance, they are aware exactly what, uh, what uh, extra cost is going to be there and what are the quality of services that are going to be improved. So I think it is it is definitely not going to be a big burden to us. It will definitely help the clients to plan properly. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much um, for your time today, Stanley, and uh, providing us a perspective from the um, yeah, DMC. Yeah, it's a pleasure talking to you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Right, I'm with Laguna Phuket CEO Ravi Chandran. We're talking about the India market. Ravi, welcome. Hi, David. Excellent. Tell us a little bit about the India market um, in terms of the importance of it, um, uh, the size of it um, pre-COVID. Just give us some insights. Pre-COVID, it was. It, it, I wouldn't say it was significant for Phuket, but it was definitely material during the low season. I think with the Chinese market now dampened with COVID, and we don't know when that's going to reboot. Um, the Indian market's huge, not only for Phuket, but for Thailand. So that's why we are now looking at the Indian market in, in, in more serious. Right. Yeah. It looks as though it's going to be one of the first international market 
potentially to come back in, in numbers. What are your insights also into how the market has changed? A lot of markets have changed during the COVID period. How does that relate to India? I think most markets, the typical, um, typical formula is guests are now staying longer. Um, before, the average length of stay was six, seven days. So now we're looking at nine to ten days. And with the Indian market, more family traditional, with the whole family coming along, I think a two-week holiday, two-week break is ideal in a place like Phuket with, with so much to offer. And what sort of things are they looking for now? They're looking for different um, uh, different activities? Uh, I think in terms of activities, I think they're all looking for activities, not only sporting, you know. Every, here we stand on three kilometres of beach. Right. Um, everything from uh, sports to just well-being, right. running, walking, um, you know. Being outdoors. Outdoors, again, without too much of a plug for Laguna. Hmm. No good. With 1,600 rooms and a golf course and three kilometer stretch of beach and okay. seven hotels, I think we've got everything that any market wants, not just particularly the Indian market, but the Indian market now is something we are really looking at because of the direct flight accessibility right. yeah. which the Indian market right. gives us. That's really one of the key opportunities, yeah, isn't correct, it? The Indian correct. market does have direct flights into Phuket. So how are you, how are you leveraging that? How are you well, talking to them? We're market? working with the individual airlines, our marketing teams and our international teams are working with agents in India in the five major cities, um, putting together packages like I would say all the other branded hotels in right. Phuket are. So basically that's how we're dealing with it and then interviews like this also helps, I guess. No, oh, good. Thank you. Um, and tell us, tell us a little bit about um, what, uh, what we have here. You've had a, a volleyball, um, beach volleyball tournament going on the last few days and it's still going on at yeah, we, the we, we, This is the world beach volleyball tournament. Before that we had the Asian volleyball tournament, which was fantastic. Um, over 40 countries. Um, and on top of that, we've had a big golf event um, right. at, at Laguna Phuket, okay. at Banyan Tree. And the golf event, the nation golf event. Have you had any uh, participation from India there? Uh, we have had two quite big Indian golfers. Okay. Jeev Singh, who okay. is the biggest Indian golfer ever. Right. Shiv Kapoor. Okay. Um, they came along. They love the course. They love staying in uh, Phuket. And hopefully with more events like that, not only Indians, we can attract other Asian markets, the Singapore market, the Korean market, right. and China, of course, when China opens its doors. Right. Crystal ball, Ravi. Um, what is the Indian market going to deliver for Phuket, certainly, um, in 2022? Uh, Pent-up demand is strong? Pent-up demand. I think Indian market would be a good substitute for the Chinese market, especially in those months where we were reliant on the Chinese market, those low-season months. Right. Um, and only that, it, it, again, I think it opens up Phuket to be a different destination for the Indians who typically went to Bangkok and Pattaya before. Right. And now with, you know, all our culinary offerings that we have, and we have Indian chefs, and right. we have a huge demand for Indian weddings. Right. We've, you know, I was going to get onto that. Yeah, yeah, tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Uh, we've always been um, popular for Indian weddings in our hotels. We have Banyan Tree, the Ducid, um, Angsana. We've had more calls in the last three months during COVID for Indian weddings. So that's been reignited. Um, and I guess because we also have Indian chefs here, yep. it makes it easier in terms of the cooking and the facilities Excellent. and everything. Yeah. Excellent. Ravi Chandran, thank you so much for being with us, CEO of Laguna Phuket. Thank it's you. Thank really you appreciate Ravi. your insights. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Right, now we're on to food and I'm here with Hessian Pires. And Hessian Pires is the corporate chef at Laguna Phuket. Hessian, welcome. Hey, good afternoon, David. How are you? Very well indeed, thank you. Tell us a little bit about food. How important is it to get it right? Look, food is paramount and we understand the Indian palate, the Indian cuisine, is so much different to anything else out in the world. It, for us to get that right, it's, it's very important. Indian food doesn't pair, it's not the same as what you'd find in a lot of other cuisines. I mean, not just the curries, we're talking about the breads, right. the desserts. To get that right is paramount, and I think we've got all our bases covered. Okay, and how about in, so in, in a hotel context, when you have the buffet, for example, yep. when you have all sorts of different cuisines, yep. how does Indian food fit in? How does it work? Generally, we would always set that in a separate area. When I say separate area, we would separate a part of the buffet just for the Indian food. Right. So we would, oh, we would call it a station, okay. actually. And we would, of course, we would have that with all our other guests. Okay. And actually, what we find is that our other guests enjoy that mix of Indian cuisine, right. Thai cuisine. Right. Um, and if it's breakfast, 
we would make sure that it's breakfast cuisine. So if a South Indian, we'd have the Idlis. If it's North Indian, we'd have the naan breads available at breakfast for them. Right. And how many dishes would you have, in, uh, you know, for example, at a breakfast? Five, at a breakfast, ten, oh, 20? no, we'd probably be close to 10 separate okay. dishes. Yeah. Okay. Cold items and hot items as well. Excellent. And tell us a little, I mean, India is obviously a huge country. Tell yep. us a little bit about the regions, the regional cuisine. How do you cater to that? There's lots of different um, tastes and preferences. Yeah. So for us over here, we actually have two specialized Indian chefs, okay. one from North India and the other one from South India. Okay. They've specialized in their North and Indian South cuisine. But then, of course, we've got Rajasthani cuisine, right. Kashmiri cuisine, and our chefs are capable of actually producing that kind of cuisine. Not only that, we've got street food, which right. is quite popular. Yeah. It's quite, again, back in vogue. And that's what we're quite specialized at, not just doing standard local version of Indian right. food. For us, authenticity is important. Give us an example. North, South. What okay. Is, what, what, what's, what's so okay. So North Indian, you'd have more of the tandoori's. Okay. So okay, we the tandoori's, the tandoori, the naan breads. Yeah. South Indian is more closer to the dorsas. Okay. I know you're one of your personal favourites. Oh, it is actually right. Uh, we'll the rasam, that. That, that kind of cuisine is what we the uh, the idlis. That's right. from the south cuisine. Okay. So it's a very specialist cuisine. Yep. So is there any, I'm um, slightly technical question for you here, here Hessian. In, ter in terms of the equipment that you need, yep. I mean, um, is there any specialist equipment that you need? Of course. And, and, and where do you get it from? Do you and build it here? Yeah, do no, you import it? Yep. Good question. So we have all our equipment that's come from India. We have our own tandoori oven. Okay. We have the tawas here. Okay. That's used for all the breads. Clay pots, very right. important for making okay. curries. So you get that real authentic flavor. Okay. Um, the big pans for making the biryani. Okay. Actually, the biryani we finish off on charcoal to get that smoky flavor. Okay. Um, so you need That's specialized awesome. equipment for that. So okay. we have that all here. Okay. It's just like eating at home. All right, brilliant. Right, um, we're going to get to the big W, the weddings yes. um, topic. Um, you know, weddings need to be wow. How do you go about... Um, catering to weddings, you know, I mean, because the, the, these, these are large groups, it's something that yep. goes on for many days. I mean, just talk us through that a little bit. An Indian wedding will go for three to four days. Okay. And it's, it's an event, you know, it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, breakfast, okay. lunch, dinner. Um, generally, we would always have our chefs very much involved in yep. the planning process, yep. speaking with the organization, organizers to work out what food they actually want, right. um, making sure they get that, the cuisine just the way. There's a lot of different, uh, you know, pan puri stations, okay. um, uh, desserts. Right. You know, Indian desserts are so much different yeah. to everything else. Okay. We have That's specialized Indian chefs that do desserts that will okay. come and work with us. Um, and that process, we go slowly, slowly, making sure we make sure we get the guests exactly what they want. Yep. The food is as authentic as yep. possible. And it's available at all times right. because Indian weddings, you know, food needs to be there. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, 24, supper. 24 7. 24 7. And what sort of scale are we talking about in terms of, in t in terms of the weddings? Yeah, we're talking. This is not a couple of hundred people, right? No, no, we're talking three, four, five hundred people. Okay. And uh, we're ready for that. You know, we, we've been ready for that for a while. Um, and we've got no problems with scaling up or we can even scale down. Okay. Okay, Hashin, I've been dying to ask you. I want to get back to the dosa. Yeah. Um, so the secret of masala dosa? For what me, it? it's, it's actually how long you soak your lentils. So I, we do it with <laughs> lentils. Okay, here's a chef's answer. Letting it soak, letting it ferment a little bit longer. Okay. That's the secret. No rushing it. Okay. <laughs> that's excellent. Um, Hashin Paris, um, thank you so much for joining no us problem, today. No thank Co you. Corporate Chef at Laguna Phuket. Look thank forward you, to Hashin. seeing you all soon. Hi, welcome Sally. So today we've got Sally Mangharam, <laughs> Managing Director of Mantra Events. So Sally, uh, Mantra Events not just, um, you know, not only plan weddings, but you also do celebrations uh, for the Indian market. Um, so tell us a little bit more about, you know, the, the Indian market in terms of celebrations. Uh, what's the it's a big market and, and business for Thailand. So give us a bit of a, a, a background of like, you know, the, the size of the business, like the estimate of um, arrivals, income generated, and room nights um, for Thailand. Right, so um, I've been doing wedding planning and events. I've been in events for about 15 years now. Uh, when we started, it was a very, you know, new business and we were just doing like perhaps maybe like six weddings a year at, at that time. And it's grown phenomenally to, uh, let's say, you know, um, I alone will do like at least 20 weddings a year, not just from India, but, you know, from all over, not including birthdays, anniversary, kids' birthday parties now. Um, we also do proposals, you know, um, so tons of things happening uh, today. Um, in terms of a wedding, the standard wedding's about, let's say, three days. 
Uh, first day is, is always the welcome dinner. Second day being the mandi and the sangeet. Um, uh, third day being the, sorry, the second day being the mandi, the third day being the wedding reception. And standard um, average size of the um, guest, I would say is about 300. I've done weddings for, ranging from 150 to about 1,200. That was uh, three years ago, we did a, this huge wedding at uh, the Splash. And that was the biggest one um, I've ever done in, in outside of Bangkok, I can say. Um, so um, a typical um, income generated, let's say, by, by from a wedding as small as 150 to uh, uh, taking, you know, let, let's say 300, I'd say 8 million to a 10 million baht just for the hotels and for with the vendors that come on board, perhaps another 5 to 10 million baht. Wow. And that would be what I would be the estimate that I have been seeing. Wow, that that is um, you know big numbers. Um, so typically, yeah. So typically, what what are the destinations that they are looking for in Thailand, and and what are the uh, I guess characteristics that they want in celebration uh, events? So um, I've done weddings literally all across Thailand, from you know Bangkok, Phuket, Kaula, Krabi. Chiang Mai, Samui, Rayong, Paria. Like I've actually covered all the resorts and all the destinations in Bangkok. Uh, I mean, in, in Thailand. And, um, you know, everybody comes in with their own um, sort of vision or th that they'd like to have their wedding. Uh, Bangkok being the hustle bustle, you know, a lot of, um, I see a lot of people coming in and saying, hey, We'd like to be able to shop. We'd like to be able to do sightseeing. And we'd like to be able to, you know, sort of have a wedding in the city. Um, and so Bangkok is, is that destination. Um, they can, you know, we have great resorts. Um, I mean, resort-like hotel um, at the Riverside, which is beautiful. It has that view of Chao Priya. It has amazing ballrooms, great dining venues. It's, it's stunning. Um, so that's one, you know, kind of like, the guests or the couple that would like to have that. Um, Phuket, you know, likelihood of, you know, the great thing being all the flights can land there, top-notch properties, beachfront, everything amazing. Hua Hin, because it's just a three-hour ride. Um, I, I have seen that a lot of Indians, um, you know, the, the Indian market, they, they really love Hua Hin, being able right. to drive in, you know, three-hour get that top-notch five-star property, um, top-notch facility, and then coming back to Bangkok. So, yeah, I've covered basically all the venues. It really <laughs> depends on each couple, what they'd like to, you know, bring on board um, for their families and friends. Thanks, Sally. And and just one last question. So, Paul Wu from um, GoFirst earlier um, just touched upon how flights are resuming. So, there's some charter flights, and then there will be um, scheduled flights uh, later on. Uh, in the next few months. So what are you seeing in terms of the market coming back for 2022? Like, do you get any um, uh, requests or demands? Um, or what's your feel for next year? So I feel there's definitely a market. I feel it's going to be slow and steady for 2022. I think the recovery with the wedding industry is highly dependent on direction and course of the virus right now. Um, travel regulation and consumer confidence. I think that's very important. I do anticipate that um, having said that, I do anticipate that there'll be smaller weddings um, as a preferred choice for immediate future and large scale events. We will take perhaps some time to fully come back. I do have six weddings confirmed as of 2022, um, you know, between the, um, let's say between now and let's say July. Um, they're very positive. They want to come back to Thailand. One thing I do feel um, would be very helpful would be if the government would help with the, the testing. That is very important. You know, that right. first day testing. Yes. We, we do, I do feel safety and health is very important. So that, for, that testing part, if we can get, you know, somehow the government or the airlines or somebody to come and subsidize that because that's a big amount for that first day for the host to um, sort of, you know, um, put out. Okay. Yeah. Cause it's like, let's say, let's say your first night is 
Yes. Perhaps like, a, you know, 7,000, it almost doubles up. So. Yeah, completely understand. Thank you very much, Sally. And uh, thank you for joining our webinar as one of our key speakers. Thank you. And good luck for 2022. Thank you very much. Take care. Thanks, Sumi. Bye. Welcome, Ranjit, to our webinar today. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me here. Excellent. So Ranjit is from Hyatt Regency Phuket, and uh, he's the Director of Sales and Marketing there. And uh, today he's going to cover a little bit about um, the customers in, uh, and guests in hotels. So as the Indian market returns, as we can see uh, from uh, and uh, touched upon from some of our key speakers earlier, how would you advise the hotels to manage the dynamics of the Indian customers and guests that are returning? I think one of the things is we know that the Indian customers are big for Thailand. Hotels need to realize that there are many sub-genres of the Indian customers. It's not just the economy side, but also the mid-scale and the luxury side of travelers. You know, Indians came and spent about 80 million Thai baht uh, in 2019, and they're definitely coming back, and they're going to come back with a bang. So apart from just knowing about the Indian market, you know, having Indian food in your breakfast item, I think people need to be a little bit more cognizant of how Indians travel. They travel in groups. They travel in families. It's always mm. the grandparents, the parents, and the kids who want to come together. So what can hotels do to kind of uh, get into that market to understand, OK, maybe we need to have a few rooms together. Uh, interconnecting rooms really work out for families. Uh, let's not forget the 600 million uh, young travelers of India who are looking for excitement, adventure. They want rooms, hotels that are closer to where the action is. We don't like to relax. We like to have fun. Yeah, and, and usually they come for a long period of time as well. So from what you can see in the past, what do you think um, you know, some of the key learnings that you, uh, hotels could take from? Sure. I think, like I said, I think hotels need to really understand that the Indian market is huge and they're very diverse. Their needs are always going to be more than what you can provide. So you need to be flexible. They're going to ask you for things that they may never use. They might want to know what time the tennis court is open when they've never played tennis. But you know what? They would like to be the know-all person. And that's one thing that I think hotels need to be flexible, understanding a little bit. You know, you call them at 9 a.m. for a meet, they'll probably turn up at 9.30. So be patient with them. <laughs> that's really interesting. So that's within the hotel. So outside of the hotel, so you talked about adventure and requesting things that are, you know, uh, totally unexpected. So how do hotels prepare for that? I think for that, hotels need to really start managing expectation of these clients, their guests, Indians who come to their hotel when they're venturing out. Okay. So if you're able to customize or create activities that, uh, that would reach out to the Indian market is a lot better than them going out and trying it on their own. So that's really important for them to kind of uh, curate some experiences for the guests even before they're coming into uh, Thailand. Right. Um, okay, loyalty. So how does um, hotel uh, manage loyalty and how do you get returning guests back um, from the Indian market? Really good question, you know, and the first thing that came to my mind is word of mouth. Uh, Indians like to speak a lot about what they did. Word of mouth works a lot, which means you need to impress every guest every time they, they come. Uh, when you have weddings, know that who is the key decision maker of the wedding. These are the people that you want to pamper, the mother of the bride. Make sure that you're pampering them. Uh, and you know what? If you get one wedding very successful, you're going to get several weddings from the same bigger family. And that's how you build loyalty. Uh, the other way to build loyalty is also making sure, you know, people, we're very media hungry. We're on Instagram, Facebook. So make sure that you're getting those key opinion leaders to your hotel who can really go out to the market and speak about uh, the property that they're staying at. Right, that's really all really great insights that you don't really uh, see un until you uh, experience Correct. Um, with the guests directly. So I, I guess a lot of it is also a personal relationship with the um, families that will then you know, get into uh, further uh, Absolutely. celebrations than not just weddings Correct. Or, or anniversaries. So thank you very much, Ranjit, for sharing your insights and uh, some of the tips for, for managing Indian um, guests. Thank you. Us. Good to be here.
Moving on, we've got Nitin Sachdeva, who's the TSEP India representative and CEO of Venture as well. Nitin, how are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much. Okay, let's kick off the discussion. We've spoken a lot about weddings and leisure, but what about the corporate meetings market? I know, is that going to be on the way or kind of looking forward into 2022? We know with Airlift right now, we're just getting charter flights, but once we're getting regular flights back in, this is a fairly defined market already in India for certainly corporates and incentives, is it not? Well, uh, to be honest, the meeting and incentive market uh, from India has been, you know, on the growth trajectory uh, for the last 10 years, you know, we have seen consistent 15 to 20% annual growth every year. So this is quite a, you know, getting uh, to a quite a growth market for, for Thailand. And uh, I would say, you know, at this point of time, the demand and the pent up demand because of the COVID situation is so much that, you know, uh, corporates are ready and they're waiting for Thailand to reopen in, in a scenario where only flights are the ones you know, there are pending. So I guess, you know, once we have uh, regular scheduled flights or even an air bubble that is signed between the Indian and the Thai government, you know, we will see, um, you know, a lot of corporate meeting and incentive groups coming into Thailand. Something that's interesting for me is certainly with the pandemic, you know, people working from home and, you know, doing those Zoom calls, we're all Zoomed out already. Do you think it's going to come back in terms of these type of incentives that smaller groups are going to be? How is that market going to change in terms of the, the size of these groups? Well, you know, uh, I believe that uh, at the start of the reopening of, of the destination, uh, a lot will depend on the, the number of flights and, you know, the seat capacity. So if, I mean, at the start, of course, we expect smaller groups, but uh, we have, you know, a, a lead lineup and, a, you know, for, for larger groups as well, which were pre-pandemic as well. So I think what we see is it largely depends on, on what is the SOP in the destination and also the number of flight seats that are will, that will be available, you know, uh, as we kickstart the destination. Sure, airlift is everything, certainly, but in terms of group size, how many, how many people do you think we're seeing in that? What kind of facilities are they looking for for the corporate getaways or the, or the incentives? Well, you know, we had an average group size of from from 50 people to, to you know, I would say uh, 250 people. So that was the average. But we had a large group size of 10,000 people as well, 6,000 people. We right now have, you know, leads which are in that range as well, you know, for next year. But again, uh, you know, uh, the, the corporate market... Uh, uh, is varied from from one part of the India to the other part because you know decision making happens in the tier one cities. But again, you know uh, sometimes it's also regional. You know, so uh, group size for for mid sized companies might be smaller from thirty to hundred people. But you know for large companies which are national level and when they make a decision on national incentives, they can go up from anywhere to to three hundred people to 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 three thousand people. Sure. So that's like you know the group size from the Indian market. It's like from but, here to here, right? It's a long market. How can hotels in Thailand really tap into this Indian outbound corporate travel market for, for meetings and centers? What's the best way, you know, in terms of how, uh, partnering with people? I think you know the most important thing that you mentioned. The key word is partnerships. You need to have key partners in in each market. Like for example, you know, India is like twenty nine states, seven eight union territories. Uh, you know, if you can have well, like one partner in each state, you know, that would really help in terms of capturing that market because ultimately you need to know where the business is coming from and who has the business. So you can't just go in in you know and do broadcasting to get my business coming in. You need to know who is a specialist and who has the right customers for your brand. So I think. The key word is partnership, and that would really drive growth for hotels. There are there are various uh, you know uh, methods to to reach out to the Indian market, but the best way is to do to reach out with partners and going directly to the customers as well. Okay, excellent. Who is Thailand competing with right now, really, for this market? When we look into next year, do you think Thailand's going to have to compete on price, or what's how do you unlock that magic? I get the airlift conundrum, but what else is important for Thai hotels to do in terms of packaging? See, I think, you know, we need to understand what our strength is. You know, uh, I don't see uh, other destinations in Southeast Asia or maybe Middle East as our competition because ultimately Thailand has, has its own, you know, strength and it's like an evergreen destination which can be repeated by corporates and it has been proven from India that we have got like repeat customers, 70% repeat customers for incentives. So, and, and, and if you ask a corporate, you know, in a survey, you know, which we did, you know, some time back, 
that you know uh, why do you like thailand and and the most important aspect that came out was that it's an evergreen destination and we feel like home you know we get our indian food we get variety of options for hotels it's cost effective you know it's value for money we have got like so many options for you know sightseeing nightlife you know and 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 these are aspects that you know corporate uh, considers before making a decision for a destination oh. so in case you know there are other destinations which we say we might say that they are competition but they are not because ultimately the corporate won't go every year to the same destination it will be rotated so thailand has its own strength we need to recognize that and we need to play on them okay maybe one final question before we go i, I know we're running short of time but what kind of experiences i mean how is the how, how is covid going to impact the experiences of incentives you know what kind of activities are going to be keyed now going out of the pandemic do you think well i think uh, you know everybody in the pandemic has learned couple of things one is of course how you know we can keep the environment sustainable you know and and the second one uh, which really uh, i would say uh, is highlighted is wellness and health so i think these are the three key elements health wellness uh, two key elements health wellness and uh, you know sustainability you know those you know experiences surrounding that and in fact hotels and and partners uh, within the destinations can can actually leverage on these experience and bind it into the itinerary and the program and and you know most of the corporates would want to you know uh, buy that out because ultimately most of the corporates want to also care about wellness health and sustainability so i think these are the three four i mean two three things that that has come up uh, from the pandemic and then of course the programs would be more immersive in terms of experience because you know they want to you know give relaxation time to to their uh, you know people who are incentivized sure. these employees or dealers because of the you know uh, impact that has happened by by working alone Uh, at home you know so they would want to definitely explore team building activities you know which really get people together to engage and you know and of course considering health wellness and sustainability okay i agree health wellness and sustainability getting out of that hotel room and having new experiences nitin sashdeva thank you so much and great insights thank you for today thank you so much thanks a lot for having me okay, take care Okay, right. Um, that's a wrap, then, isn't it? What a fantastic session! Time for Christmas. Time for Christmas. Fin- finally, I've been waiting. I've been waiting the whole webinar, right? Oh, right, right. This is the last webinar of the year. Thank, it's been a great thank year God, of I'm, webinars. I'm all zoomed out, right? But, I'm all zoomed but, out too. We will be back next year. C9 Hotel Works delivering Asia Creative Concepts AV as well. Our partners here in the studio. We will be back. Happy Christmas, just like the Terminator. Man. Merry Christmas. Right. See you guys next year. Hi, my name's Ashton. I'm a creative director here at Creative Concept AV, and I'd like to show you around our digital studio. So behind me, we've got a 4K LED wall. We've got studio lights up the top here, some ambient light columns, confidence monitor on the bottom, and a 4K camera. If you come with me this way, I'll show you what's actually behind the studio. So over here, we've got Toto manning the actual stream that goes out. to the internet. We've got Andrew on our video switcher and we have Piwat on our 16 channel digital mixer to handle all the microphone and sound inputs. This is the type of studio that we use for our online events and we actually set it up in a single day here at Sai Laguna Phuket. It's a five-star beach resort. So at the end of the day, you could walk out the door and jump straight into a swimming pool if you wanted to. We have a sister studio in the Grand Hyatt Bali. which is a green screen studio and for events that we've done we've actually built studios around the region to be able to support the kind of online events that we do that's just a little bit of insight of what we do so if you're interested in this kind of thing creative concept av give us a call and uh, maybe we'll do your next event thanks very much